Donald Trump did not spend his post-indictment weekend strategizing with his lawyers, as one might expect. No, the ex-president hit the campaign trail, glad-handing with supporters at events in Georgia and North Carolina. And who is that over the president's shoulder while he signed memorabilia for his MAGA fans? Why, it's Walt Nauta, the former White House valet turned Trump staffer, who just so happens to be Trump's co-defendant in the documents case. The men will get to spend even more time together tomorrow when they are both expected to be arraigned in a Florida courthouse. That's when Nada will take the first step in a long journey that many others have taken before him on the path to becoming the latest fall guy for the boss. Michael Cohen knows something about that journey, having gone to prison for taking part in that illegal hush money scheme Trump was indicted for earlier this year. Cohen's the host of the Mea Culpa podcast and co-host of the Political Beatdown podcast, the author of Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice Against His Own Critics, and he joins me now. It's so good to have you here. Good to be here. So I, there's, I want to set something up here because I thought about testimony that you gave before Congress about how Trump communicates, uh, where you talked about his, his mode of doing this, and then I want to read from the indictment about the lawyer, we think it's Evan Corcoran, attorney one, who made notes about how Trump talked to him. So this is you uh, talking to Congress in, in 2019. Take a listen. Mr. Trump did not directly tell me to lie to Congress. That's not how he operates. He doesn't give you questions. He doesn't give you orders. He speaks in a code. And I understand the code because I've been around him for a decade. Here's, here's an example of the code. This is Trump and Trump attorney one discuss what to do with the folder containing documents with classification markings. During that conversation, Trump made a plucking motion, as memorialized by Trump attorney one, we believe it's Evan Corcoran. He made a funny motion as though, well, okay, why don't you take them with you to your hotel room if there's anything really bad in there, like, you know, pluck it out. And that was a motion he made. He didn't say that. Yeah, look, how many times <laughs> more do I have to say that Donald speaks in code? This one is a little bit less of a code right, than exactly. the it's way, like, that, yes, right, than the right, way yeah. that I had explained it. But this wouldn't be unusual. I mean, I've seen him do this when we were at the Trump Organization, when he questioned uh, several of us attorneys in regard to turning over documents to the attorney general in the Trump University case, when he said, why would you turn it over? Just delete them, throw them away, get rid of them. Uh, so we're like, well, we're under subpoena. And he was furious that one of the attorneys elected not to do it. And he was looking for somebody to validate the fact that he wanted it that it could and should be done. You see, Donald has no respect for the law. He has no respect for the Constitution. He has no respect for process. He only cares about what he wants. And as long as that is in concert with what he wants, it's acceptable. Once it becomes adversary to what his wishes and wants are, he goes ballistic. I just want to go back to that. So he's telling you, I mean, I guess I guess it's a privileged conversation, but, you know, like I said, that, that ship has sailed. But he's telling you and the lawyers, like, why would you respond? To, why would you truthfully respond to discovery, basically? Correct. Which is what he apparently says here, as recorded in this indictment. This is the, in the... In and that's why I said to you that right. none of this is unusual. It's a repeat of something, as I said, I had seen uh, and been involved with uh, going back many, many years now. There's also just the, his conception of a lawyer is he seemed, you know, he talks about the Hillary Clinton lawyer. He seems to think that lawyers have like a magical power, like it's like in a comic book or something that like attorney client privilege or something like makes them able to do stuff that like other people can't do. And he wants them to do the bad stuff for him because they can do it and then save him getting in trouble. I'm not so sure he sees it that way. I I see it more that he doesn't care who he throws <laughs> right. under the bus. Right. Right. He doesn't care about the powers, and if, it's and not it's, him. As long as it's right. not that's him right. that's going to reap the, um, you know, the repercussions, he doesn't particularly care. But he wants other people to do the stuff. Yes, and if it's coming from a lawyer, therefore it's okay, it's better for him because he always has the out that the lawyer should have known. Right. That's why I have him. He's my lawyer. He should have told me X, Y, it's plausible deniability. Well, that's what you get in this crazy scene where he, <laughs> he, he goes behind the back of his own lawyer who's coming to search his stuff, moves all these boxes over the place. The lawyer comes and does the search, finds 38 documents anyway, and then calls up another, a third lawyer to ask her if she would come to Mar-a-Lago the next morning to act as the custodian records and sign a certification regarding the search for documents with classification markings. Uh, 
Christina Bob, we think that's attorney three, had no role in the review of Trump's boxes in the storage room. So basically, Corcoran gets wise to it. And then he's like, I can't sign this thing. And then he gets Christina Bob to come and do it. And yet still 60 percent of the Republican Party says that they would vote for Donald even after an indictment. Twice impeached, civilly held liable for sexual assault, indictment by state, indictment now by federal government, um, soon to be another state, Georgia. Um, who knows what will happen yep. with January 6th? Right. And yet they'll still do it. They'll still vote for a guy who legitimately does not want to be your president. But he wants you, to be your dictator. Wait a second, but didn't you spend years looking up to this guy and thinking highly of him? Remember, Didn't some, you go through the yes, exact same thing? I sure did. And I warned people of exactly, including Mark Meadows, at my House Oversight Committee hearing when I said, I know what you're doing. And it didn't work out right for me. And I assure you, it won't work out right for you. The difference, though, is when I was representing him and taking care of him as his fixer, they like to call me, he was just a myopic real estate, New York, Florida developer. He wasn't the president of the United yeah. States of America. So who really cared other than the handful of people that he was screwing over on, right, contract, in, on right, contracts yeah. and so on, banks, et cetera? What business was that of anybody else's? It wasn't. Now as president of the United States, every single thing that he said becomes relevant to the world. Right. And the crazy thing is even though he's not president right now, he's still commanding more airtime than the current president, than the Biden administration. Well, you know, you get you, if Joe Biden got himself indicted tomorrow, I think we cover well, it You're probably right <laughs> about that, right? I mean, well, well, and, the, well, and the, the bad part is what Trump is so clever at and he's so good at is this media manipulation. Yeah. All of a sudden, you know, who cares about him stepping up and walking up onto the, you know, onto the tarmac for his plane or getting off? Why are we giving him so much oxygen mm. to breathe? I just say you let it go. First of all, I don't think tomorrow's going to be as big a deal as everyone's making in Florida. It certainly wasn't a big deal here it wasn't in New in York, York yeah. at all. There was more press yeah, than totally. there were people. No, and I don't think that the Oath Keepers or the, you know, uh, the other crazy groups are going to be out there, you know, doing anything, protesting. Most of them are in prison right now anyway. And what happened to the help that Donald promised them? Everyone that had done things to benefit Donald has gotten left in the dust. Absolutely. And they, and they will. Well, that brings us to my the final thing I want to ask you about is, is Walt Nada, who is his who is indicted along with him and who is alleged to have participated in a conspiracy by being the person who moved the boxes at Donald Trump's direction and lied about it to federal agents. And that lie is recorded in the indictment. I find myself having some sympathy for the man, but I'm curious as someone who also has been in a somewhat similar position, how you feel about it, reading the facts about Mr. Nada. OK, so Walt will get thrown under the bus. There is no doubt about this one. And if there's anything that I can do, I would look straight into the camera and say, Walt, I know you're watching. Run. Run as fast as you can, my friend. Right. And as a former military guy, I know you know how to run quickly. Run as quickly as you can, because Donald Trump will throw you under the bus faster than you could possibly imagine. And he won't throw you under the bus simply just to save himself. He'll just throw you under the bus f simply because he can and because he thinks it will provide him with some form of a benefit. I think that's I mean, I, I don't have a dog in the fight as it goes. I, I don't know Mr. Not at all. But that seems like sound advice to me. Michael Cohn, who does know a thing or two about how these dynamics work. <laughs> Good yeah. to have you here. Great to see you. Thank you very much.